From When Stars Explode by Ken Croswell, Ph.D. Highlights A supernova is the spectacular death of a star. The last time people saw a supernova in our galaxy was 1604. That was before astronomers were using telescopes. However, every year astronomers see a supernova exploding in other galaxies. Astronomers can often observe such supernovae for months before they face from, from view. Most supernovae, that's the plural of supernova, and pronounced supernovae, come from massive stars. Antares is a massive star. Such a star is born with more than eight times the mass of the sun. The exploding star that people saw in 1604 produced a glowing cloud of gas and dust called a nebula. The nebula at the left of is all that remains of that star. When a massive star is young, it is hot, bright, and blue. Its center makes energy the same way the sun does, by changing hydrogen, the lightest element, into helium, the second lightest element. This nuclear reaction creates energy that heats the star and makes it shine. The outflow of huge amounts of energy, much of it light, pushes outward from the star's center. This is good because the force of gravity pulls inward and tries to make the star collapse. But as long as the star can make energy, it can fight the force of gravity and survive. However, a massive star must make a lot of energy to fight the gravity of its own mass, so the star shines very brightly. As a result, we can easily see the star across hundreds of light years of space. This is a huge distance because one light year is the distance that light speed that light speeds through in a year, nearly 6 trillion miles. But because the star shines so brightly, it uses up its hydrogen fuel within millions of years, much less time than the billions of years the sun will take up to use its fuel. Soon, the star's center runs out of hydrogen. Then the star expands and cools, turning into a red star like Antares. Astronomers call such a red star a supergiant. The red supergiant makes energy by changing helium and other elements into heavier elements. But these nuclear reactions do not make much energy as hydrogen did. Within a few million years, the star has no fuel left. Now the star is in big trouble. The star can't make energy to hold itself up, and gravity is still trying to pull the star inward. So the star's center collapses, scrunching itself into a small, dense object. Meanwhile, the star's outer layer shoots into space at millions of miles per hour. The star has exploded. In a star, two opposing forces are always at work. Gravity pulls the star's mass towards its center. If no force worked against gravity, the star would collapse. But energy, in the form of heat and light, pushes out from the center and works against gravity. So long as the star can make energy to fight gravity, it stays alive. A star needs to fuel needs fuel to make the energy that st that fights the pull of gravity. Once the star uses up its fuel, gravity wins the fight. The star's center collapses and its outer layer blasts out into space. The star becomes a supernova. Time. Type 2 supernova. Helium carbon Hydrogen, normal star fusion, heavy elements, hydrogen iron core, massive star imploding, hydrogen core rebound, remnant core shock wave explosion. Our sun won't blow up. Supernovae are, no, v, are violent, but we do not have to worry. The sun will never explode. If a supernova occurred within a dozen light years of Earth, we would be in trouble. But the nearest star that will explode is more than a hundred light years away. Believe it or not, supernovae V help life. In fact, without them, Earth would not exist. Neither would we. Here's why. When the universe began, it had only three lightest elements. The three lightest elements. Hydrogen, helium, and the little lithium. But life needs heavier elements such as oxygen, which we breathe, and iron, which is in our blood. And Earth is made of mostly oxygen, silicon, and iron. Almost all oxygen came from massive stars, like Antares. During their lives, massive stars cause helium nuclei to jo join together to make oxygen. Then, when the stars explode, 
they cast this oxygen into space, and the explosion themselves make iron. In fact, scientists think supernova explosions made most of the iron in the universe. Number six, stars are mostly made of A, helium, B, hydrogen, C, oxygen, D, iron. Number seven, what are two main ideas of the article? A, supernovae are violent explosions of stars. B, astronomers do not always use telescopes. C, astronomers can see supernovae for months. D, stars make energy by changing hydrogen to helium. E, so supernovae are important as they helped create Earth. F, so supernovae are interesting for astronomers to study. Number eight, which two sentences from the article best support the, the answer to question seven? A, that was before astronomers were using telescopes. B, such a star is born with more than eight times the mass of the sun. C, its center makes energy the same way the sun does by changing hydrogen, the lightest element, into helium, the second lightest element. D, if a supernova occurred within a few dozen light years of Earth, we would be in trouble. In fact, without them, Earth would not exist. Number nine, read the following sentence. But as long as a star can make energy, it can fight the force of gravity and survive. Which of the best, which is the best definition of energy as it is used in the sentence? A, physical strength. B, hydrogen and helium gas. C, heavy metals that increase weight. D, power that comes from heat. Number 10. The author most likely included the illustrations in order to A. Help the reader understand scientific concepts B. Provide additional information C. Make the reader more interested in the topic D. Explain complicated processes